Anytime you see a surge that lasts, let's say, a month or so in, in the monetary metals, generally silver will beat gold. And similarly, when gold pauses or pulls back a little bit, silver will beat gold on the downside. So it's a wild child. And the same is true with the gold miners. You know, there have been points in time, especially that summer, the spring to summer 2020, when gold went up, you know, 40 percent and they went up triple. They're slingshot type markets, silver and the miners especially now. And I think the biggest slingshot I've ever seen possibly in my entire career, which goes back to the mid 70s, is what the miners are set up for right now. And I, I think there's some big guys out there who may not be looking at charts like I am, uh, momentum charts especially, but realize just on a fundamental basis that uh, this is a place to be. Aluminum slid and nickel paired earlier gains after a package of U.S. sanctions omitted any major curbs on Russian industrial metals. The action announced on Friday included measures against more than 500 people and entities linked to Russia's war machine, but left the country's base metals industries unscathed. The two metals had been buoyed this week by expectations that the package might put pressure on supplies. Viscount Mining and Lux Network launched silver backed NFTs. The collaboration between Viscount Mining and Lux Network isn't just about launching an advanced technological platform. It's a bold step towards democratizing the mining industry. By leveraging Lux's proprietary quantum safe blockchain technology, this partnership makes it possible for anyone to invest in silver, transforming the way we think about asset ownership and investment. Now we'll show you more clips of Michael Oliver, but first like subscribe and turn on notifications so you do not miss out on our daily videos. Well, anyway, there's a lot of asset managers uh, in the stock arena who have to be long stocks because they're going up. If you're not long stocks and, and, and you know, part of the party, then you're underperforming your competitors. And so people will move money to the fund that's making more money away from the fund that's making less. So even if they don't like the stock market, fund managers have to be there. But a lot of them, and I don't know how many, but I'd be easily 50% of them uh, are a bit nervous. You know, they, they've been around long enough to know this stinks. Some, something's, it's too narrow. It's too, too uh, bubbly. Uh, it's, you know, the kids in the street are screaming about it. You know, not the old guys, but the kids in the street are screaming about how the stock market is doing. So they know that they're probably in a dangerous position. And so they're probably ready to push the button and reallocate some assets, you know, especially out of tech, let's say. Like Druckenmiller did a few weeks ago, he moved, sold some big tech and moved into gold miners, you know, Barrick and, and uh, Newmont. Well, it turns out the, just the other day, another one, a guy named Paul Singer from Elliott Management, apparently has made the move as well. I don't know to what percent, but apparently enough to be noticeable in the press uh, into gold miners. And, you know, people forget about the notion that I guess you, your granddad and your father knew about, and so many in, in your generation don't, <laughs> that, you know, buy cheap, don't buy high. You know, buy cheap, buy value, buy something that's not going to go to, to zero. This is close to zero as it's going to get. That's the best place to be. And, oh, you might be six months early or a year early or whatever. But now the miners, after the pullback from the 2020 rally high, you know, where they surged much more than gold on a percent basis. They've come all the way back down and erased a good chunk of that move, not going back to the bear lows in 2015. You know, at that time, for instance, GDX was 14 bucks. It's trading right now around 26. So it's still, you know, a little almost double where it was. But it's had a big pullback, 20 some odd point pullback, a huge percent over the last three years. Um, so a lot of people are just pulling their hair out. This is garbage. It's no good. Well, you know, some sectors, some stocks can go out of business because, well, aside from business malfunctions, but the nature of what they fabricate or what they deal in. You know, you can maybe be a, a, a chip maker that in the world no longer needs your kind of chips. You're gone, you know, et cetera. But you, you're not going to – gold miners – Unless they're the speculative, they're speculative ones always, and there's some that go out of business, just like in any industry. But basically, it's it's ground to theoretical zero right now, and I think some smart money is seeing that and starting to make the move. And uh, I'm not concerned they're going to make money this month, but you know probably they got a major low in a major market that's the most undervalued it's ever been relative to gold, relative to the S and P, relative to anything, and it isn't going to zero, and. They're already taking the step. 
Now, there's other asset managers who haven't done it, but they've been listening. You know, Druckenmiller did this. Well, no, I did that. You know, Paul Singer did this. Well, why did he do that? And so they're thinking about it. You know, it's got it's got them thinking and doing doing some homework. And so what we argue, and we've argued since mid-December, that's when the Fed minutes came out. And the Fed basically said, we'll cut rates maybe next year, but we're not going to raise rates anymore. Okay, now I don't think that's changed really. There are a few, few commentators have said maybe they'll raise rates. I don't think that's going to happen. And I don't think most people think it will. But the issue is when will they cut rates? Well, maybe that doesn't matter. The point is maybe it's already the Fed party is priced in. And if you look at an S&P chart starting mid-December to the present, it's this. Look at a gold chart since then, it's it's that. It's, it's, it's down and then sideways. Uh, silver's been down and then more down, you know, not, not to lower lows, but more down than gold. Gold's been sideways. And the miners have been punished. Gold rises despite Fed caution on rate hikes. On Thursday, Governor Christopher Waller said that he was in no rush to cut rates. He also said that January's figures may have been driven by one-time quirks. Many companies raise prices at the start of the year. Or they may suggest inflation is stickier than we thought. We just don't know yet. Fed official Patrick Harker, president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia, also expressed caution about cutting rates too soon. Gold stocks struggled at the start of the year, performing worse than the metal itself. This was likely due to disappointing operating results and guidance for the sector. Sentiment towards gold stocks has been poor, leading to overselling after any negative news. For example, Barrick Gold saw a drop in its share price despite analysts maintaining their targets. While companies must provide accurate guidance, it seems that negative sentiment towards the gold sector is exacerbating market reactions. Now we'll show you more clips of Michael Oliver. Before, check our pinned comment for some massive sign-up bonuses if you want to add crypto to your commodities portfolio. Enjoy the video. And another market that's also moving with gold is T-bonds, price-wise. There was his gold is pulled back. This is true for the last year and a half, actually. The bond market's been fairly well synced with gold, not with the stock market anymore. And I'm suspecting that you get enough wobble in the stock market, especially due to this NVIDIA bubble, possibly being pierced at some point. Um, then some of this money is going to flow somewhere. And I think a lot of people are going to move into the gold miners because, because of the reasons I explained. Uh, and it's such a tiny little sector that we've described it. would be like a wet bar of soap being grabbed. Uh, and I think that's you got to be aware of that. So if you're thinking in terms of an investor, not a trader, you got to be looking at the gold miners. Gold's behaving quite well. Miners aren't. Is that going to continue forever? No. So think about it. Uh, a couple big guys have and a lot more of them will once the stock market starts to wobble. Do we think we're near a wobble point? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> If we see that today's high holds where it was in the S&P and the NASDAQ, we're near the end of the month now. There's four more days left before the month ends. And if we don't extend monthly momentum beyond where it's already been with today's high, which is the high of the month in price, it did not take out the momentum high of last month. So when you look at a monthly momentum chart of the S&P or the NASDAQ 100, instead of seeing strong December, strong January, strong February, you see a strong December a flat January and a slightly declining February. So momentum is actually paused and built like a range at a high level. So it's overbought and it's stalled. All it's going to take next month, meaning starting Friday next week, is to downtick a percent or so in these indexes. And I'm going to start snapping the momentum lows we've seen in February and January and December. It won't take much. So what we need to see right now to get that rolling is – I think simply a pause and perhaps a minor pullback between now and the end of the month. At that point, we say, get ready. The stock market's probably ready to downturn. And, and I think gold won't wait for that. See what's happening today, for example. Gold's about 20 bucks off its low. Stock market only began to wobble a bit. I think it's inverse. So watch the stock market if you're in gold because the stock market gets more evidence of wobbliness. Watch gold. Because it's going to say, OK, now we're inverse. We're now going back up. And I think the miners will, too. Very rare event. People are, are burnt in their memory is one month in the year of 2008 when we had at the late, late, late in the bull market, a uh, bear market in the stock market. It had peaked in sept 
October of 2007 and October of 2008 now, already substantially off the highs. As a metals broker you had a month that basically you could call a crash. And numismatic in October. Values for gold it hastened you toward what ultimately would be the low in March of 2009. During that month, metals. gold said, oh, go, I'll go down the stock market. Gold and silver, but if you look at the context of gold you. in the years prior to that and then the years after that event, it was opposite the stock market. So people are just fixated on that one event. It's burned in their memory. And they think, oh, stock market goes down gold. Well, no. Historically, it's mainly the opposite. Look at the late 70s. We had the biggest, one of the biggest bull markets in gold. 76, you made a low at 103, mid-1976. You were at 850 by January of 1980. Much of that occurring in the last year. Well, what were stocks doing? They were a wasteland. People, the stock market, you made no money for a decade in the stock market. And yet commodities and gold soared. So don't make that false linkage. What are your thoughts on today's episode? Is Michael Oliver spot on? Post in the comments section down below your honest opinion. And I see you on the other side.